how about we get into this concept of spring and Easter and the eggs and see, I, I, I am what I call a pagan. So I have my own ideas about what the colored <laughs> eggs mean, but, uh, I'd yeah. like you to break it down though. And, um, you know, let's begin there if you don't mind. Well, let's begin. With what, what do you think the, the colored eggs represent? Well, there's certainly a symbol of fertility. Um, and this is at the same time when various pagan belief systems, the same time of year, Easter, uh, when, when springtime would come to the northern hemisphere again, uh, where fertility was much in the, uh, in the practices. Yeah, in, the, in the picture, yeah. yeah. And, and, Every, it, uh, all the plants begin to grow, all the animals begin, begin to reproduce, and they, and then later on they're having their young and they grow. And as, and as spring grows into summer, the animals have, have all reproduced. They are, everything that's alive is reproducing. And there's so much color. All the flowers and, and plants and trees and color is everywhere, especially with flowers around the northern hemisphere. you got the beautiful, beautiful flowers. And so the color is very big with spring. There's no color, period. In winter, it's just frozen. But in spring, it's very colorful with all the plants and the animals and the different color, uh, you know, animals that, that we have. And they're all reproducing, coming up with new, new offspring. Mm-hmm. And so this is why the animals come out in the spring because it's getting warm and life is changing. Life is coming back to the northern hemisphere. Right. And so that's why even we humans, we start thinking the same way. That's why we have spring weddings. Because we're getting ready to reproduce again. We didn't have enough babies and enough people. We're going to reproduce again. So now we're getting spring weddings and the humans are going to get together and it's going to be very colorful. And so that's why you have the egg because the egg represents the reproduction of life. Mm. And actually, if you go back to the old Phoenician Canaanites thousands of years ago, there was a, there was a goddess that was connected with uh, with the the worship of the lights and spring and the coming back to life and she held in her arms a rabbit and the rabbit mm-hmm. always represented fertility it represented the the uh, continual reproduction of life because rabbits are always reproducing and so that's why the rabbit became important even thousands of years ago in the symbolism because the rabbit represented so, uh, an animal that just reproduces <laughs> without stop. And so uh, the rabbit becomes important back in two, uh, three or 4,000 years ago, back in the, in the ancient world of Phoenicia, Cana, where we call today Israel, in that area of the world, there was actually a goddess in, in spring, and she was carrying a rabbit. And the, and the rabbit had was carrying an egg. And so this is the idea behind the, the Easter egg. And the egg represents fertility, and that's when the animals and plants and everything else begins to reproduce itself mm-hmm. when the sun comes back to the northern hemisphere in the spring. And so we, and what, what causes that to happen is that the sun, which was dead for three days in winter, is gone down south, is dead but to us in the northern hemisphere, is dead. And so when it comes back, it starts its annual journey on de- December 25th, it starts its annual journey back to the northern hemisphere. And three months later, 90 degrees and 90 days later, uh, it has come back to the Northern Hemisphere and officially, 90 days later, it officially crosses over the equator. Coming back to the Northern Hemisphere, it actually crosses our equator. And so that time was very special to the ancient people because it represented life coming back to the Northern Hemisphere. Everything's going to, all the plants are going to begin to grow, etc. Mm. And so... Um, 
Well, th- this is a practical matter because, first of all, there's a lot of agrarian societies at that point which depended on their agriculture. So what did you do? You 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 stored things for the winter because nothing was going to grow, number one. So uh, you, you had to know that this was the time when the earth was going to soften up again. It wasn't going to be hard. It was going to be fertile, you know, and useful That's to right. plant a seed again, to plant seeds, to plant a seed, whatever. Uh, but also, you know, the idea that all the colors are on the eggs, the reason why the colors are there is because in a literal sense during spring, this is when colors would emerge directly because what happens? Flowers bloom. Very practical. Again, flowers yeah, bloom. Like I said, the flowers are all representing beautiful colors. Right. And they it all represents yeah. the coming back of life. Right. Life was coming back on the in the northern hemisphere. All the birds are reproducing, the animals are reproducing, the, the beautiful flowers, all kinds of just hundreds of thousands of beautiful flowers coming back to life in the spring. And so it's a big celebration for life coming back to the earth. But Jesus said he would come back. And Jesus is God's son, the light of the world. So the son is coming back. He is coming back to bring life to the world. And as I said last week, the Egyptians understood that the son was pure energy, pure energy. And so energy is life. And the son was life itself. It was the progenitor of energy. So it was life itself. And the ancient people said that if the son were to be stingy and keep its its energy and not share it with us, the sun would ultimately last forever because it's energy and energy is life. But the sun, for some reason, decided to share his energy with us. And so, therefore, God's sun is dying because the sun is giving his energy up for us continually. And obviously, he's going to run out of energy one day. It may be billions of years, but he's going to run out of energy one day. And the sun is a star, and the star will die. Hmm. And so, therefore, the ancient people said that God's son, the light of the world, the one we call Jesus, he was God's son. He gave his life so that you might live. He died so that you might live. Uh, and the symbolism is the sun is dying each day because it's giving his energy away. And therefore, he's going to die completely when he runs out of energy. But thank God he won't do that for a while. <clears throat> but the sun will die one day. So ultimately, God's son is dying and giving his life so that you might live. <clears throat> Very simple. 